It's week six of the NFL, where London will play host to a different kind of football. It's the Rams and the Monarchs, and it's coming up next. Set to go now in week six of the NFL season, and we are underway on EA Sports. And the opening kickoff will not be returned, as that will be a touchback. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. They're led out by their quarterback out of Fresno State, Derek Carr. It's a pretty bland game he had last time out. Ended up throwing one interception. Didn't have a touchdown to offset it. But the team found a way to win. He found a way to lean on other parts of the offense that carried them through. Powers through him. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. A look there at his numbers on the ground a week ago. Pretty good as he found himself in the end zone on two separate occasions. And those are the most important numbers because no matter what you pile up prior to the goal line, getting in is all that matters. Putting those numbers up on the board, and they love them when they're sixes. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. Blitz coming, and down he goes. He'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. But just two plays in, and Charles already their first sack defensively. Yeah, how about that? That didn't take long, did it? And now they look at third down, and that's another time to try and go and get the quarterback, too. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. This is taken at the 15. Call that one an even 60 yards. 6-0. Oh. And that will come the offense as they take over. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. Now a play fake here on first down. Rolling to his left. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. And this one is incomplete. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, You've got to find a way to hold them under 20, because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points score, give yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. Well, this defense for the Rams, they were very good last week in the win over New Orleans. Yeah, and what stood out to me on tape, the way they were flying to the football. So that tells me that they've got all their assignments down and they're playing with extreme confidence. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Flush to his right. Wide open is Watkins. He's got him. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big connection on that one. 32 yards. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Back to throw. Buying time to his left. Now he'll square up and throw deep left sideline. And this is caught. And finally out of bounds all the way down at about the two. And they rattle off a big one. Well, make that now two completions for him on this drive. And these aren't ordinary completions. They're big ones. Yeah, these are the types that make a secondary talk to each other and not in a good way. Oftentimes pointing fingers. Hey, who's got him? Someone cover it. That type of indecision can open up even more big plays. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. So can you hear the pep talks don't really work in the heat of the battle? But collectively, this defense has to say to each other, we've been on our heels this whole first drive. This is where we need to dig in. And they got a nice stop right there for a loss. And it's caught. Touchdown. Dallas got him. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Monarchs have taken a first quarter lead. Elliott 
good with a PAT. And that makes the score 7-0. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go. Trying to find Cup, but it's intercepted. Darius Slay with a pick. What a start defensively. Your offense goes out, gets the touchdown, and then you get the interception. Just perfect. How about the discipline that they showed on defense? Because after the offense scored to go up 7-zip, you would think they might be a little extra aggressive trying to get back at them. Instead, they read their keys well. When they took the shot downfield, they were more than prepared for that one. On the move to his left. And he wisely will throw that one away. That was nice work there defensively to force the incompletion. Now, even though this drive started in plus territory, they're still not in field goal range yet. So they can work towards another couple of stops and not allowing that turnover to hurt. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. He'll look to throw. Forced out to his left. Going deep here for Watkins. This is caught inside the 15. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. It's a big play there. You can feel the effort all the way up here. He tried his best to get there. Didn't quite make it. But down around the two, three-yard line, Got to love the effort, and especially the big play that gave his offense a great opportunity. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. A great effort there with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Monarchs have taken a 13-0 first quarter lead. Elliott good on the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. The football going back to the Rams now. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So, decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So, they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? Two yards, the loss, second and 12. able to plow forward up to about the 29 just shy of the 30 so they get half of what they needed it'll be third and six upcoming a quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game and a couple of extra defensive bats in the ball game here on third and six car gonna let one fly for robinson and this is caught Right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes inbounds there. A big play that time through the air. 33 yards. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards. Second down. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. From the 36, Carr got a man open. It's Tyler Higby. Touchdown, L.A. Tyler Higby, his first touchdown on the year. And the Rams are able to get back within a touchdown. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that.
Matt Gay on for the extra point. And that one makes it 14-7. That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Eluding the pressure right. And the defense loses him. It's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A big connection on that one. 36 yards. How about the first half he's putting together? Well over 100 yards already with that last catch. And to me, they'd be well served to keep looking his way. A number of big plays already in this one. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And one more time, that's Watkins. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Well, there's your leading receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage, putting on another clinic well over 100 yards. Are we taking notes? We should be, right? Because I'm going to go back and watch this tape and really enjoy what I'm seeing. The route running, competing for the football, just breaking down a defense. Sliding out of the pocket. And he delivers a strike complete to Watkins. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions. In the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it? For them to get downfield that quickly. And now first and goal, expect them attack right here on this play. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. From the two now, second and goal. Second and goal. They'll try again. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It's and he'll get in. He's over for the touchdown. The sneak successful for the yard out. And the Monarchs are able to add on to that lead. So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. Elliott good with a PAT, and it's now 21-7. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. The return man down to a knee and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minutes. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. The run there on first down gets him a yard to the 26. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, 
and he couldn't even get going moving the football. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now a play fake. Carr. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. It seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. Another try after the first down sack. Carr going up top for Cup. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. Thus far, they have been able to move the line of scrimmage very well in the running game. Almost felt like they said in the huddle, can you guys pass protect? Let's take a big shot downfield. Didn't get it on that one, but they may come back to it again. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. A good pick up there, seven yards, but it brings up fourth down. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. He's thrown for a touchdown. He also ran for a touchdown, so they have to count for a guy that can do a little bit of both. And because of that, that puts a defense back on its heels because normally you just think, okay, he's going to throw the ball. Let's tee off, put a little extra pressure on him. But when he's able to either escape or run with the ball in design plays. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. I think this defense, Charles, realizing the deficit they're facing, they're going to have to step up and make more plays like we just saw there. Yeah, and those are the type of plays that can focus the defense because, as we know, they've had their trouble so far in this one. But they just proved to themselves that they can get to him, and I expect them to continue to bring that type of pressure in order to try and turn around their fortunes. He's going to look deep for Watkins. And it looked like he got the feet down, did he? Yes, it's a catch. A big play there just before halftime. But one thing's for sure, they're going to have to come up with something at halftime because he is absolutely roasting them right now. They're going to go through the whole litany of things, changing coverages, you know, what are we going to do to put a man on him? The big thing to me is treat it like a good pitcher treats pitching a game. Change your timing. And it looked like he got the feet down, did he? Yes, it's a catch. A big play that time through the air. 33 yards. What a first half this has been offensively. I mean, defensively, what do you do when you're getting torched like this? Now, these receivers are absolutely wearing them out. So two thoughts come to mind. One, get some oxygen to fill up your lungs a little bit. And number two, and it's caught. Touchdown. Devontae Smith. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Monarchs had six to their lead. Elliott on for the extra point. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. So that drive, four plays. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. 
Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. Looking down at the stats here, realizing he has no catches. They targeted him twice, but no catches. So how do they get him more involved, Charles? You make sure he touches it on routes that he likes to run. Maybe even run a reverse or some type of a jet sweep so he gets his hands on the ball and get him active and involved in the game. You just try and find ways to get him going, and it doesn't have to be something that's big downfield. Maybe kind of like in basketball, just a shooter seeing the ball go through. You get him a rep, get him more comfortable. I agree with that totally. Maybe set that solid screen and give him an easy look. Well, to this point, no catches. This time they stay on the ground. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Carr now on first down. And this is taken in by the tight end, Bryson Hopkins. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. time and what's been a fairly one-sided you want the third quarter already no problem let's do it both teams making their final adjustments we're closing in on the second half and for the call let's get you back over to london where we rejoin brandon god all right coach thank you and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three as they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. And the half will begin with a touchback. And this offense set to go now to begin the third quarter. And the first half definitely went their way, and this would seem to be a great opportunity to kind of put this game a little closer out of reach with a score here. Yeah, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them because if they can add seven more to their lead before the other guys even see the football, that could be the decisive blow in this game. I think that's how they're eyeing it. That's how they're approaching it. Flushed out right. This is Smith with a grab. And he makes it all the way down to the 31. And a huge play that time. Just more of the same there, partner. Guys have just been running free in the secondary this entire game. No pass rush. A lot of passes completed. Been an easy day for them. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. They're going to look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Miller. Three yards the game there, second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And some nice running going to get him down close to a first down at the Rams 22. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. Now back to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark it down at the 9. A lot of deflated looks on that defense. It seems like they just cannot find a way to get a key stop on third down. Here's another conversion. And now this offense, they're in a position to go up even further as they've got it first and goal. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. On play action, they'll throw. He'll buy some time right toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Something we haven't really seen much of from him, an incomplete pass. Yeah, last week he finished at 70%. This week he's up over 80%. I don't know how you slow him down. Pass rush is usually the best way because a quarterback on his back usually can't complete a pass. They'll look to throw on third and goal. Left side here, that's the tight end fan. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. Brandon, a good idea there on third down. Run a little clear out and hope you get your receiver the ball coming across the formation. Nice design, but well played defensively, and they stop it well short. So after four touchdowns in the game for this offense, this time they're forced into taking the three. But you did mention four touchdowns, right? So four out of five, not too bad. I think that's a pretty good record for them. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now. Really, anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coach together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over coming in and just screaming wake up yeah. let's get moving guys i'm kind of glad we weren't in there half time actually <laughs> I mean, you think you might have turned it on us too yeah but right now whatever was said hasn't been working and now a throw on first down there but it's incomplete well, the passing windows are just not there and that's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long and that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do they can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively and he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. He's had trouble finding open receivers all game, CD, and that's because really there hasn't been many. This defense has been all over them. Yeah, they're one of the better defenses in the league, and every time I talk to someone around the NFL, they all say the exact same thing. They're so fundamentally sound, it's hard to execute against them. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent. And that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Amazing. Perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. Now a handoff here to his running back. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. Steps away. Toward the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was able to keep the feet in bounds. They talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. They'll look to throw now on first down. Escaping the pressure right. Going deep this time for Miller. And that's caught inside the 35. And all the way down inside the 25 before he gets out of bounds. A big play there. In our pregame meeting, all they talked about was keeping him hemmed in and wanting him to make his throws from the pocket because they knew he was pretty dangerous if he got outside. And he just showed it right there. Pretty good arm, too. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. Out to his left. And it's caught. 
Touchdown! Noah Fan, his second touchdown on the season. And the Monarchs have got it on cruise control. Elliott good on the extra point, and the lead will swell by one more. A drive there of just four plays. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up every Touchdown, L.A. A big play there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Rams are able to cut into this lead. Well, we have seen some rookie running backs come in and have a big impact year one. And this guy would certainly fit that bill as that was one heck of a run there. And this is a play defensively where you're just looking around and saying, what was that? What just happened? You're looking at your teammates. They're looking at you. And let's face it, your defensive coordinator, he's not going to tip his cap to him. That's not how football works. But he probably should have after that run. That was absolutely sensational. And he covered a lot of ground on that one, as evidenced by the final total there on Next Gen Stats. Following the touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. London about set to take over on offense. Still operating with a comfortable lead despite the score a moment ago as they begin first and ten. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Maurice Hurst, the defensive tackle, getting in there for a loss of five. So that time, Charles, a quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. Second and 15. Flush to his right. Looking right side, and that's complete to Watkins. Chris Watkins, 76 yards. And the Monarchs are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Carr. Going up top for Cup. 
Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Here's Carr to throw. Trouble and he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sand. We've been around this league for a while and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. The Rams on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and a mile. Now Carr. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Fletcher Cox providing a little deja vu, back-to-back -back sacks, and now they're staring at a fourth and long. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And taken right at the 35. That'll wind up being a 50-yard punt, though they do get 10 back on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. London about set to take over on offense. And this crowd has certainly liked what they've seen. Their guys fully expected to win this one coming in, and they have not disappointed as they've got the big lead here in the fourth. He'll come out throwing here on first down. Eluding the pressure right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And it looked like he got the feet down, did he? Yes, it's a catch. A big connection on that one. 39 yards. Charles, you said earlier this defense is probably going to need to hold these guys right around 20 or under that if they were going to have a chance. It was evident pretty early on that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, they left 20 behind a long time ago in this game, didn't they? It looks like they're headed towards a big, big number. But 20 was the threshold because that kept them in the ball game and kept the pressure off of their own offense. It'll be a gain of five. And that'll make this a second down. He was out there waving his arms. And when you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help, I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is because you got to get his attention because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space, and he found the right spot for the completion. On the right side, this is Miller. Touchdown! Scotty Miller. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Monarchs are looking to run it to 5-1 and one on the season as they add to their fourth quarter lead. Elliott good with a PAT. And that would extend this big lead. The drive there only spanning three plays. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. L.A. readies for its next possession. Their mini two-game win streak appears it might be going by the wayside unless they can pull a rabbit out of their hat. On first and 10, here's Carr. Quick hitter here, it's complete. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. The tackling, oh. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. 
Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, getting the sack. And you could say that is just another cherry on top for this defense and that entire team. But really, this defense has sparked what's been an impressive effort here in this one. And notice you used the word sparked because you're not seeing that on the other side of the ball, are you? The offense right now, the spark has left their game, and it's been because of what you described, that defensive pressure. A deep ball down that right sideline, and he made sure that he put it where either his guy was going to catch it or no one was. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. London about set to take over on offense. They're looking at a third straight win here if they can hold on. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Flushed out right. And incomplete on the deep ball. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, are you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. Dancing to his left. Now he'll let it go on the run. Deep left side. And it's knocked away and incomplete. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He'll hit Watkins on the crossing route. And he will finally go out of bounds, but not before he takes it down to the 25. It's a big play there on third down. No let up in this passing game. They've been a well-oiled machine throughout. And I actually saw a few guys on the sidelines at the end of the third quarter doing the old hold-up four fingers college sign, meaning the fourth quarter is ours. And they certainly weren't kidding. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. They'll contain him to just four, second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, I know defensive coordinator is going to be pretty excited about what he just saw there. Great knockback by their front. And now with the ball where it is, I would expect to see the offense throw the ball on second and third down here. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. A huge win defensively there on the sack, setting him back 12 yards. And now third and goal. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. Third and goal as they look to pour some more salt in the wound. Back to throw here. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Jalen Thompson picks it, and the Rams are going to take possession here as they got it at their own four-yard line. Well, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. Now after the INT, it's Carr. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. 
to throw it's Carr throwing for his running back and he's got him complete and he'll get it up a little shy of the 15 they'll spot him down at the 14 yard line a big offensive explosion help leading them to victory and 